Hello and welcome. My name is Alan and today we are doing our weekly week in review. That's right. We are taking a look back at the previous week's sports, history, science, and news headlines. So, with that said, let's go ahead and just kind of jump into this, starting off with sports. As we know, uh, the NFL is currently in the offseason. Um, the college... Um, sports right now, I think, is just baseball. I believe so. But the college basketball and hockey and football are done for the year. Premier League soccer is done. Uh, the NBA Finals ended last week with the Toronto Raptors winning the NBA Finals. And the NHL ended with the St. Louis Blues winning the NHL uh, Stanley Cup Finals. So that means the only sport really going on is... Major League Baseball. So let's take a look at what's going on with MLB. And there we go. MLB.com slash standings. It's taking its time, so I do apologize for the wait. All right. It's slowly coming up. All right. And it's thinking, thinking, thinking. Which is more I can I can say for most people. But anyway. Ah, here we go. American League East is led by the New York Yankees at a record of 48 and 27. The Tampa Bay Rays are four and a half games behind at a record of 44 and 32. Followed up by Boston, Toronto, and Baltimore, in that order. In the AL Central, Minnesota leads with a record of 49 and 26. They're followed nine games behind by the Cleveland Indians, who have a record of 40 and 35. And they're followed by Chicago White Sox, Detroit Tigers, and Kansas City Royals in that order. And in the AL West, the Houston Astros lead with a record of 48 and 29. They're followed seven and a half games behind by the Texas Rangers. Who have a record of 40 and 36. Then the Oakland Athletics, the Los Angeles Angels, and the Seattle Mariners in that order. Going over to the NL, in the NL East, the Atlanta Braves lead with a record of 44 and 32. Behind them, 
by four and a half games is the Philadelphia Phillies with a record of 39 and 36, followed by the Washington Nationals, the New York Mets, and the Miami Marlins in that order. In the NL Central, the Chicago Cubs lead with a record of 41 and 34. Behind them by one and a half games is the Milwaukee Brewers with a record of 40 and 36. And they're followed by the St. Louis Cardinals, Cincinnati Reds, and the Pittsburgh Pirates in that order. Although, I'll be honest with you, none of these teams are really that far out. So right now, this looks like the most competitive of the divisions. The last team, the Pittsburgh Pirates, is only six and a half games out. So it's just unfortunate that there are so little teams that can go to the playoffs. Because this division is really tough. Really di a difficult looking one right now, so. And in the NL West, the Los Angeles Dodgers lead with a record of 52 and 25. Uh, they're followed 11 games behind by the Colorado Rockies, who have a record of 40 and 35. And they're followed by the San Diego Padres, the Arizona Diamondbacks, and the San Francisco Giants in that order. And that's currently the standings in baseball. And that is it for sports. Now, let's look at the week in science. ScienceNews.org Langostine claws are a rich source of chitin and chitosin. Biodegradable materials with possible applications in eco-friendly food packaging and beyond. Hmm. And of course, we're talking about the claws of lang langoustine lobster. Uh, winter woes. The worst winter losses of the U.S. honeybee colonies in more than a decade raise worries about how much punishment these crops pollinator, crop pollinators can take. Coastal connections, thanks to, thanks to eggs and larvae surfing ocean currents around the world, many fisheries depend on other nations spawning grounds to supply their fish stock a study shows and the same wavelength when two bats are together their brain activity falls into lockstep a synchrony that may help coordinate some social behaviors a study finds Okay, that's kind of interesting. Parasites ruin some finches' songs by chewing through the birds' beaks. Oh. The cosmic cow may be a strange supernova. Huh. 
So there, are, there's a cosmic um, um, I don't want to say entity, but there's a cosmic um, site that may actually just be a strange supernova. How NASA's portable atomic clock could revolutionize space travel. Lost wallets are more likely to be returned if they hold cash. U.S. honeybees had the worst winter die-off in more than a decade. The world's fisheries are incredibly intertwined thanks to baby fish. Mice and bats' brains sync up as they interact with their own kind. DNA confirms a weird Greenland whale as a narwhal beluga hybrid. Fifty years ago, bulletproof armor was getting light enough to wear. This body on a chip mimics how organs and cancer cells react to drugs. Cold War era spy satellite images show Himalayan, Himalayan glaciers are melting fast. How seafood shells could help solve the plastic waste problem. A computer model explains how to make perfectly smooth crepes. Sneezing plants may spread pathogens to their neighbors. Rotavirus vaccines may lower kids' chances of getting type 1 diabetes. Diabetes. Well, that's interesting. Maybe it'll give them something else, to, another reason to have vaccines instead of a stupid fear of, what you call it. It's like, people, vaccines help. They're scientific. They are proven through scientific understanding. It just, it bothers me. To no end about these idiots. Science is fact, people. You cannot pick your science out that you want to believe. You know, you cannot believe one thing and then choose not to believe the other. It's simply buffoonery. Because you're going, well, I'm just picking the facts I, that, agree, that I agree with. No. Science works everywhere. Female rats face sex bias too. Hyenas named the Arctic during the last, or roamed the Arctic during the last ice age. Norovirus close ups might help fight stomach flu. Diamond detectors could aid the search for dark matter. Is a long dormant Russian volcano waking up? It's complicated.
Table salt may be hiding in Europa's underground sea. Let's see. Many of the world's rivers are flush with dangerous levels of antibiotics. Massive super flares have been erupting from stars like the sun. Okay. And that's it for sciencenews.org. Let's look at sciencemag.org see what they have as their headlines using cell death to resurrect anti-tumor immunity how many do tiny fish rule the reefs bird and plant disturbances Ruminant genomes, contagious pursuit training, how an epigenetic lock drives a rare disease, and men need not apply. University set to open jobs just for women. House panel clarifies how universities would report sexual harassment cases to U.S. funders. Why dirt eating goats never need to visit the dentist. They watch artificial intelligence predict Conan O'Brien's gestures just from the sound of his voice. Hmm. It could take 118 years for female computer scientists to match publishing rates of male colleagues. What big ideas will shape U.S. science over the next decade? Here are some contenders. As countries battle for control of North Pole, science is the ultimate winner. And how many reindeer evolved to survive the freezing Arctic winters? And that's all it has. Now, let's pull up YouTube. We're going to look at... Some of the science-based YouTube pages I'm subscribed to. <clears throat> Star Talk. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, on Star Talk, they talk about um, Avengers Endgame and how much it kind of matches up to the science we know. Let's see. What else? What else do we have? 
Do, do, do. There we go, TED. Technology, Education, and Design. Let's see what they have going on. How to build your confidence and spark it in others. Sloths, the strange life of the world's slowest mammal. The next global agricultural revolution. The anti-CEO playbook. And my identity is a superpower, not an obstacle. There is Veritasium. Let's look at it. I made myself fireproof and waterproof with aerogel. That ought to be fairly interesting. But those are the channels I have on YouTube and it'll be interesting uh, based on that. Now, let's do today in history. As I've stated before, I went and studied history in college. I've always had kind of a interest in... Um, historical matters because it was always interesting to see how things kind of shaped up because of events that at the time didn't see as weren't seen as important But let's begin with June the 15th. Yeah, that's right. June the 15th. In 1215 on the 15th of June, King John puts his seal on the Magna Carta. which was basically a document put together by English nobles to say, hey, we want power, it shouldn't be just you, you know, having full power. Let's see. June the 15th, 1864. The Battle of Petersburg begins. During the Civil War, U.S. Grant and his Army of the Potomac and General Robert E. Lee and his Army of Northern Virginia collide for the last time as the first wave of Union troops attack Petersburg. A vital southern rail center 23 miles south of the Confederate capital of Richmond, Virginia. June the 15th, 1877, the first African American graduate of West Point. Military Academy. Henry Ossian Flipper was born a slave in Thomasville, Georgia 
in 1856 and was the first African-American cadet to graduate from the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, New York. Let's see. That, th this is kind of a bad one, and it set a bad precedent. Uh, June the 15th, 1964, President Johnson decides against asking Congress for authority to wage war. At a meeting at, of the National Security Council, McGeorge Bundy, National Security Advisor to Lyndon B. Johnson, informs those in, in attendance that President Johnson has decided to postpone submitting a resolution to Congress asking for authority to wage war. Which it should be unconstitutional because one of the very statements in the Constitution Congress has the power to wage and cease wars. Not the president. It doesn't give the executive branch that kind of power whatsoever. June the 15th, 1863, President Lincoln calls for help in protecting Washington, D.C. President Abraham Lincoln calls for help in protecting Washington, D.C., America's capital city. Throughout June, Confederate General Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia was on the move. And so Lincoln calls for help in protecting D.C. from the Army of Northern Virginia. June the 15th, 1917, U.S. Congress passage passes the Espionage Act. Which is what they're going to try to try um, Julian Assange under. On this day, day uh, June the 15th in 1917, some two months after America's formal entrance into World War I against Germany, the U.S. Congress passes the Espionage Act, enforced largely largely by A. Mitchell Palmer, the United States Attorney General, under President Woodrow Wilson. Now, let's look at June the 16th. <laughs> Excuse me. June the 16th in 1884, the first roller coaster in America opens.
June. Did you quit it? June the 16th, 1963. Soviet cosmonaut Valentina Tereshkova becomes the first woman in space. June the 16th, 1977, Leonid Brezhnev is elected Soviet president. June the 16th, 1858, Lincoln warns that America is becoming a house divided. Newly nominated senatorial candidate Abraham Lincoln addresses the Illinois Republican Convention in Springfield and warns that the nation faces a crisis that could destroy the Union. June the 16th, 1903, the Ford Motor Company is incorporated. June the 17th. June the 17th, 1885, New the Statue of Liberty arrives in New York Harbor. June the 17th, 1940, France to surrender. With Paris fallen and the German conquest of France reaching its conclusion, Marshal Henri Pétain replaces Paul Renaud as Prime Minister and announces his intention to sign an armistice with the Nazis. June the 17th, 1972, the Watergate burglars are arrested. In the early morning of June the 17th, 1972, five men are arrested for breaking into the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate, an office apart hotel apartment complex in Washington, D.C., June the 17th, 1943, FDR Secretary of War stifles Truman's inquiry into suspicious defense plant. President Franklin D. Roosevelt, Secretary of War Henry Stimson phones then Missouri Senator Harry S. Truman and politely asks him not to make in inquiries about a defense plant in Flasco, Washington. Of course, Truman would later become FDR's um, vice president and would be vice president when 
FDR passes away, leaving Truman as a choice for uh, to take over as president, finding out that it was, I'd say it was probably one of the places that they were developing the bomb. The atomic bomb, so. <coughs> Alright, let's look at June the 18th. Okay, June the 18th. June the 18th, 18th. 1812, the War of 1812 begins. It's a war that's often forgot in the U.S., but we were kind of routed by the British. Though with help we won the revolution, in 1812, the British came back and basically got their vengeance on the former colonies. So yeah. Uh, um. There was even the burning of um, the Capitol House in which they had to escape and Dolly Madison had only a picture of George Washington under her arm. Let's see. June the 18th, 1815. Napoleon defeated at Waterloo. At Waterloo in Belgium, Napoleon Bonaparte suffers defeat at the hands of the Duke of Wellington, bringing an end to the Napoleonic era of European history. June the 18th, 1940, Hitler and Mussolini meet in Munich. Benito Mussolini arrives in Munich with his foreign minister, Count uh, Tiano, in, to discuss immediate plans with the Fuhrer who doesn't like what he hears. June the 18th, 1789, President John Adams oversees passage of the first Alien and Sedition Acts. President John Adams oversees the passage of the Naturalization Act, the first of four pieces of controversial legislation known together as the Alien and Sedition Acts on this date in 1798. Let's see. June the 18th, 1979. 
Jimmy Carter and Leonid Brezhnev signed the SALT II nuclear treaty. During a summit meeting in Vienna, President Jimmy Carter and Soviet leader Leonid Brezhnev signed the SALT II agreement dealing with the limitations and guidelines for nuclear weapons. All right, let's go to the 19th. Oh, there's a big one. June the 19th, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg ex executed for espionage. Come on now. Computer. Work with me here. Quit being so pompous. June the 19th. 1867, Emperor of Mexico executed. Austrian Archduke Ferdinand Maximilian installed as Emperor of Mexico by French Emperor Napoleon III in 1864 is executed on the orders of Benito Juarez, the President of the Mexican Republic. Juarez has kind of a patchwork background. He's had some great successes for Mexico, but he also had some horrible losses for Mexico as a leader, so... June the 19th, 1868, Father DeSmet talks peace with Sitting Bull, attempting to convince hostile Indians to make peace with the United States. The Jesuit missionary Pierre Jean DeSmet meets the great Sioux chief, Sitting Bull, in present day Montana. Okay. Britain's King George V changes his royal surname. On June the 19th, in 1970, 17. During the third year of World War I, Britain's King George V orders the British royal family to dispense with the use of German titles and surnames, changing the surname of his own family, the decidedly German Saxe-Coburg-Gotha, to Winds Windsor. On June the 20th, let's see what happened. June the 
June the 20th, 1789, the third estate makes tennis court oath. Inverse. Quit. Moving on me, computer. Would you quit that? In Versailles, France, the deputies of the Third Estate, which represent commoners and the lower clergy, meet on the Jeu de Pomme, an indoor tennis court, in defiance of King Louis XVI's order to disperse. June the 20th, 1900, the Boxer Rebellion begins in China. In response to widespread foreign encroachment upon China's national affairs, Chinese nationalists launched the so-called Boxer Rebellion in Peking, calling themselves Yi Ho Xuan or the Righteous and Harmonious Fists. The Nationalists occupied Peking and killed several Westerners. Let's see. June the 20th, 1863, West Virginia enters the Union. During the Civil War, West Virginia is admitted into the Union as the 35th state, or the 24th state, if the secession of the 11 southern states were taken into account. The same day, Arthur Borman was inaugurated as West Virginia's first state governor. And from June the 21st. On June the 21st in 1788, the U.S. Constitution was ratified. And if you know anything about history, you know the United States won its independent or declared independence in 1776. So it took from 1776 until 1788 before the U.S. Constitution took code. We did have an um, actual document stating national laws and everything. It was called the Articles of Confederation. But they were very much um, set towards state favorability rather than a centralized government. And one of the problems that was encountered was it was hard to collect taxes to help pay for the revolution that had helped declare our independence. Because every state had their own form of currency and where it was very, it gave a lot more power to states. It was, it was hard to collect the taxes.
June the 21st. In 1810, Zachary Taylor marries the woman who will become his first lady, Margaret Smith. Let's see. June the 21st, 1964. The KKK kills three civil rights activists. Michael Schwerner, Andrew Goodman, and James Cheney were killed by a KKK lynch mob near Meridian, or Meridian Mississippi. The three civil rights workers were working to register black voters in Mississippi, thus inspiring the ire of the local clan. And on June the 21st, 1779, Spain declares war against Great Britain. On this, on June the 21st, in 1779, Spain declares war on Great Britain, creating a de facto alliance with the Americans. Spain's King Charles III would not consent to a treaty of alliance with the United States. So instead, they declared war on Great Britain. And that's all we have on history.com. Let's go back to YouTube and look at some history based. Um, channels here. Biographics, there it is. Let's see what they've had in the last week here. They've had a video on Audi Murphy, the most decorated soldier ever. <clears throat> A video on John Franklin and the Lost Expedition. A video on William Shakespeare, the world's greatest playwright. And a video on Metternich, a dandy, a womanizer, a pompous fop, and the coachman of Europe. So that's it on um, biographics. Now, that brings us to the top 10 idiots of the week. In no particular order for the week of June the 15th through the 21st, we have Jeff Bezos for whining about AOC calling him out to pay his fair share of taxes and treat his employees better. 
Scott Pressler for trying to push Trump propaganda against Kyle Filinski. John Bolton for trying for pushing Trump to attack Iran. Chuck Todd for smearing AOC when she calls out concentration camps as what they are, concentration camps. They concentrate people that the Trump administration does not want away from everyone else. They're concentration camps. Call them what they are. The Japanese internment camps during World War II were concentration camps. You know, you're just going to have to face facts, Todd. That's what they are. They're concentration camps. And Doug Ford for being almost as monstrous as Trump. Joe Biden for going to bend over for Wall Street just for fundraising. Christina Cotarucci for attacking Taylor Swift and her new video in an article saying she was patting the LGBTQ community on its head. Mike Pompeo for pushing the idea of military action in dealing with Iran. Nancy Pelosi for not wanting to begin impeachment despite saying Trump has committed crimes. And Donald Trump for being the complete and utter moron he usually is. Now, let's look at the news headlines from the week. On Saturday, from Status Quo, Bernie Sanders supporter says that democratic socialism would free us from our corporate overlords. From Secular Talk, Michael Smirkonish of CNN concerned throws about centrists going too far left and a trans pastor starts a church in the South. From the Humanist Report, AOC calls out Pelosi and the Democratic Party's weakness on impeachment. Mike interviews Sama Hernandez and shows why she is a true progressive, unlike Beto O'Rourke. From MCSC, a look at the Democratic primaries, the matchups, and what can be expected. And Tulsi Gabbard calls BS on the Iran-Japan oil tanker narrative. From The Intercept, Green Glenn Greenwald talks about the leaked Brazil archive exposing Operation Car Wash. On Sunday... From Democracy Now!, Vijay Prashad talks about U.S. aggression towards Iran and says, No one wants war. Israeli human rights law lawyer on defending Palestinian rights says, I choose my humanity. And why Brazil's elites resent former president Lula's rise to power. From Vice News. Why white European tourists are visiting South African slums. 
from MCSC. Jank says voters are mental if they don't vote Biden over Trump in the general election. And Tulsi's Stop Arming Terrorist Act will finally pass. From the Patriot Act, Hassan Minaj explains why your internet sucks. Looking at the division of regions between corporations. And from last week tonight, John Oliver explains what impeachment actually is and what it would potentially expose. Monday, from Status Coup, a McDonald's worker speaks on CEO Greed, saying, if we stop working, you lose your lavish lifestyle. Should Elizabeth Warren's polling boost worry Bernie Sanders? And Kamala Harris standing with workers after raising cash in Wall Street penthouses. Ooh, excuse me. From Secular Talk, discussing non-interventionism versus internationalism with Michael Brooks. From Philip DeFranco, Bella Thorne's asking or taking her own power back <coughs> after having her accounts hacked. Taylor Swift reaches a video for Calm Down supporting the LGBT community. Updates on the Chinese Hong Kong extradition issue. And an explanation of what is happening between the U.S. and Iran. From Democracy Now! The U.S. and World News Headlines. Two million march in protest in Hong Kong over extradition law. Activist Joshua Wong released from jail in China. Iran now enriching uranium. Pompeo not taking military action off the table. A young Indian girl died of heat stroke after being smuggled to the border. ICE has put 5,200 immigrants in quarantine for mumps or chicken pox. India has placed tariffs on U.S. products in response to the U.S. tight a U.S. hike on steel and aluminum. Guatemalan elections currently happening. In Sudan, Omar al-Bashir makes his first appearance since his outing. Barcelona's mayor re-elected Trump to kick off his 2020 bid in Orlando. Zoe Spears, a black trans woman, was found dead in Maryland. Fallout for prosecutors in the Central Park 5 case continues. And Phoenix police chief and officers apologized after a video release of the incident. Hong Kong protest of around 2 million calls for withdrawal of extradition bill and resignation of Hong Kong leader lab. And new documentary reveals racist narrative that fueled response to Laquan McDonald. From Vice News. Eric Holder in his mission to make you care about gerrymandering. Looking at the harassment that comes following a campaign donation. And trading races is the blackest card game ever made. From MCSC, 
MSNBC omitted Bernie from a poll while Bernie wins at the Poor People campaign while Kamala Harris just sinks. From TBTV, Tim looks at the Arizona family suing the Phoenix PD for $10 million. From C-SPAN, U.S. to halt aid to El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. From Vox, a look at the filibuster rule that has gotten out of hand in the Senate. On Tuesday, from Status Coup, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, and others flood New York to bow down to Wall Street. Joe Biden fundraises in swanky $34 million apartment of who's who in Wall Street. From Philip DeFranco, Elijah Daniel said he purchased Hell, Michigan and renamed it Gay Hell. And can they can only fly pride flags. Women accuse filmmaker Max Landis of emotional and sexual abuse. Parkland shooting survivor Kyle Kashev had his Harvard scholarship revoked for racist comments. From Secular Talk. Border Patrol found to be confiscating kids' medicine. From Democracy Now!, the U.S. and World News Headlines. Former Egypt President Mohamed Morsi died when he collapsed in court. Acting Defense Secretary Patrick Shanahan won't... Um, is, is sending 1,000 troops to the Middle East. Mexico deployed 6,000 National Guard troops to its southern border. Uh, the state cut all aid to... Uh, the U.S. cut all aid to Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras over the migrant crisis. The UN warned it will likely have to suspend food assistance to Yemen because of Houthi rebels. In Golan Heights, Netanyahu wants to build Trump Heights. Ugh. Supreme Court rejected appeal to reverse redistricting and ruled 7 2 that. Defendants can be tried for the same charges as long it is, as it is in the other of state or federal. So if you're tried for federal, you can still be tried for state. If you're tried in the state, you can still be tried for federal. Charges of the same thing. So, uh, a Parkland survivor had his admission to Harvard rescinded. <coughs> Boeing issued an alert that affects one of its planes. Arctic monitors found 40% of Greenland has experienced melting in one day. Day and permafrost has been melting in Canada. Joe Biden protested outside of uh, a billionaire fundraiser. Biden didn't do the protesting, he was the one protested outside of a billionaire fundraiser. And that was the U.S. News Headlines. Also, 
Mohamed Morsi, the imprisoned democratically elected leader uh, of Egypt, collapsed and died in court. And Julian Assange's indictment decriminalized or actually criminalized the news gathering process, says Pentagon Papers lawyer. From the Rational National Valedictorian speech gives hope for the future. And a look at two new progressive candidates, Jamal Bowman and Jessica Cisneros. From the Humanist Report, eight unintentionally hilarious unhinged moments from Trump's ABC interview. Candace Owens goes full SJW just to own the libs. From Vice News, a look at an Oxycontin salesman of the year who doesn't regret his work. And Ken Burns wants to save a liberal arts college before it dies. From MCSC, a look at what to expect from Marianne Williamson in the first debate. A look at what to expect from Andrew Yang in the first debate. Was Harvard right or wrong for rescinding the Parkland survivors' admission? From TBTV, Bernie Sanders dismisses Trump tweet and calls him a phony. From C-SPAN, Senator Chuck Schumer, Schumer on the withdrawal of Patrick Shanahan as the nomination for Secretary of Defense. And from Vox, astronauts left poop on the moon and why we should go back and get it. On Wednesday, from Status Coup, are Hillary Clinton donors who met Kamala Harris in the Hamptons switching to Joe Biden? Joe Biden asked GOP billionaire who compared raising taxes on wealthy to Nazi Germany to fund him, and Joe Biden tells Wall Street donors, you deserve to do fine. From Philip DeFranco, outrage over model Bella Hadid pointing at Saudi and UAE planes with the heel of her shoe. Bella Thorne attacked by Whoopi Goldberg for pushing back against Hacker. And a catfishing case in Alaska that ends in the murder of a disabled girl. From Democracy Now!, the U.S. and World News Headlines. Acting Secretary of Defense Patrick Shanahan has resigned. UN has called for Mohammed bin Salman to be investigated for the death of Jamal Khashoggi. New concerns over Justice Department's impartiality emerge. Catherine Gorka, wife of Sebastian Gorka, to be the new secretary of DHS. Ken Cuccinelli towed ICE not to accept asylum seekers. AOC calls immigrant prisons concentration camps. Amazon responded to AOC saying Amazon has made money on starvation wages. Forty people killed in Mali over ethnic tensions. Trump kicked off 
his 2020 campaign that many called a hate rally. <clears throat> the House Judiciary Panel to hold hearings on reparations. Trump refuses to apologize for actions in Central Park 5 case as fallout continues. Pacific Gas and Electric has agreed to pay for its row in forest fires. Justin Trudeau allows the passage of Trans Mountain Pipeline in Canada as native people speak up. And that is the U.S. and World News headlines. Also, former New York Times General Counsel James Goodell on fighting for the press from Nixon to Trump. Facebook sparks outrage after announcing a global cryptocurrency. One year after AOC's success, Tiffany Caban challenges the establishment in an outsider bid to be the Queen's DA. I thought we were going to be executed. Police held family at gunpoint after four year after four year old took a doll in Phoenix. And why Facebook's new cryptocurrency could endanger privacy and competition. <clears throat> From Secular Talk, a compilation of Kyle out of context clips. From the Rational National, Doug Ford gets booed by 2.5 Toronto Raptor fans. And Biden asks billionaire Trump donor for money. From the Humanist Report, Bernie Sanders thoroughly dismantles the Trump administration's anti-Iran propaganda. AOC blasts Trump's fascistic immigration policies, prompting conservatives to cry. From Vice News, El Salvador's new president thinks he can turn the country around. Ocean Vuong breaks apart the immigrant experience in his debut novel. Marianne Williamson says, yes, Trump's ice raids are exactly like Nazi Germany. And Hong Kong's youth won't let China erase the memory of Tiananmen Square. Oh, sorry. Shoo. Yawning a lot here. From MCSC, Tulsi reveals that Trump labeled Iran's army a terrorist group. Bernie teaches MSNBC host a lesson on why we shouldn't go to war with Iran. Tulsi is purposely omitted from a poll and Bernie takes the gloves off. Bernie Sanders trolls Elizabeth Warren and it's epic. From C-SPAN, Ta-Nehisi Coates says black people continue to suffer from the impacts of slavery. And from Vox, Vox talks about the return of their series Border with it borders with its look at India. On Thursday from Status Quo, why is Elizabeth Warren moonwalking away from Medicare for all? CNN props up poll that favors Elizabeth Warren over Bernie Sanders. And Joe Biden literally tells wealthy donors not to worry. No one's standard of living will change. 
from Philip DeFranco. 20,000 Christians want Netflix to cancel the series Good Omens because it pushes what they say say is uh, making the devil softer, even though it's only supposed to be a one-season series, and it's actually a series from Amazon, not Netflix. <sighs> I swear. Some Christians are so whiny. Jack's film says Fortnite stole his move, but allowing them to uh, use it anyways as they give the profits for it to charity. A water crisis in India because of severe heat and a late monsoon season. And the push for a study of reparations and the conflict it faces. From Democracy Now!, the U.S. and News headlines. Iran shot down a U.S. drone in, US, in Iran airspace in a hearing in front of House Democrats. Brian Hook grilled on if the president has the power to declare war, which if you look at the Constitution, he does not. House Judiciary Panel discussed reparations. Joe Biden under fire for reminiscing of his relationships with segregationists. Hope Hicks refused to answer questions in a House committee. Trump admin closed Obama-era rule that tightened down on energy companies. Xi Jinping um, visits Kim Jong-un in North Korea. UN report finds 71 million people displaced by war and violence. International investigators said three Russians and one Ukrainian charged with murder for firing a missile that downed the Malaysia Airlines flight in 2014. <clears throat> Reverend William Barber pushes... For a moral budget, as poverty is a moral crisis. Governor Gavin Newsom apologized for California's slaughter of Native Americans. And Joey Harjo becomes the first Native American poet laureate. And that's the headlines. Also, we have writer ta Coates makes a case for reparations before Congress. Tanahisi Coates is interviewed and says that reparations is not just about slavery, but centuries of theft and racial terror. Tanahisi Coates on Joe Biden. Better than Trump is a very low standard. And Tanahisi Coates on reparations and racist U.S. atrocities. From Secular Talk, a look at the first Democratic debates. John Stewart eviscerated immoral goons in Congress to their face. Biden tells rich donors, I'll fundamentally do nothing. The Dems' horrible no-good attempt to be cool on Twitter. And Bernie Powell drivers Trump on CNN with facts and logic. From the Rational National, Chuck the Cup Todd smears AOC while ignoring an actual crisis. 
From the Humanist Report, Joe Biden reminisces about working with Southern segregationists. Joe Biden says Cory Booker should apologize to him for asking him to apologize. It is time to panic. The Trump administration wants war with Iran and John Bolton is leading the charge. From Vice News, Louisiana is getting an unlimited supply of a $24,000 Hep C cure. The case for reparations goes to Congress. And what it is like working at a company where everyone knows your salary. From MCSC, Iran shoots down U.S. spy drone. Trump's re-election kickoff crowd size should scare the hell out of every left to send the country. Update on Arno the Rescue Kitten. And a debate breakdown, a look at concentration camps, and more. From C-SPAN, Trump on Iran's row and downing a U.S. surveillance drone. And from Vox, a white, when white supremacists overthrew a government. And on Friday, from Status Coup, here's what the booming economy looks like. Warmongers are pounding the drum of war for Iran. Shocker, MSNBC comes to the defense of Joe Biden. And President Trump accused of sexual assault by columnist E. Jean Carroll. On Philip DeFranco, an in-depth look at the Foreign Agents Registration Act, or FARA. Bill is looking at the use of FARA on journalists. From Democracy Now!, the U.S. in World News Headlines. Trump approved and then called back strikes on Iran. Congress said Trump must get approval before any military conflict. Senate has blocked the sale of weapons to Saudi Arabia and the UAE, but Trump says he may veto. British court said British arms sales to Saudi Arabia are unlawful. Federal court ruled Trump administration can strip funding for Title X, a.k.a. Planned Parenthood. The Associated Press reported some children, teens and adults, locked up for 27 days without any sign of help. <coughs> Former intern Japanese Americans um, during World War II to protest at Fort Sill. A court blocks authorities from making arrests in immigration courts. Ecuadorian judge ordered release of Ola Bean. A British parliamentarian, Mark Field, is arrested for choking and shoving a climate change activist. Firefighters in Philadelphia called to fight a fire at the Philadelphia Solutions Refining Complex. Suicide rates at the highest level since World War II. And that's it for the U.S. and news, world news headlines. 
Also, Trunk pulls back from a ran attack as Boatman and Pompeo continue to push for war. Velma Aldina, barred from Guatemala presidential election, says country is captured by corruption. And Iran expert says military confrontation is inevitable. From Secular Talk, Kyle has a Twitter battle with a pro-Trump chicken hawk. Bernie brings up history of pro-war lies on NB MSNBC. Centrist warm up to Elizabeth Warren, and Tulsi tries to rein in the war machine with a new bill. From the Rational National, Ilhan Omar shames heartless politicians in a powerful speech. <clears throat> From the Humanist Report, Amazon really wants AOC to shut up about her, their exploitoish, exploitoish, exploitation uh, uh, of workers. Vice News. From Vice News. Black students in Virginia spent months archiving images of white people in blackface. And this sports network is trying to uncover the next superstars through viral videos. And finally, from C-SPAN, Representative Mike Rogers on Iran and Trump's war authority. And that is it for now. I am exhausted. But anyways, as always, educate thyself. Think, read, study, learn. And I'll see you all again in the next video. But until ne until then, later.